Hi, welcome to today's video. This is the place to find all the latest astronomical news, from the discovery of space junk linked to the SpaceX program in Australia, to the drama surrounding China's space junk re-entry into the Earth. If you're looking for the latest space news, you've come to the right place. First, more snowy mountain space junk found during a visit from the Australian Space Agency. The third piece of space junk, thought to be from a SpaceX craft, was found in the NSW Snowy Mountain. Mountains. Farmers on neighboring properties in Numbla Vale recently found two more pieces of debris. This came after a loud bang was heard in the area on July 9th. People thought the November 2020 launched SpaceX Dragon spacecraft re-entering Earth's atmosphere caused the sonic boom. According to estimates, one piece of trash was buried deep in the ground and was about three meters long. On July 14th, a Moonba resident found and took a picture of the third piece of debris. The owner didn't come forward until late July, when ABC reported about the space junk. On Saturday, technical experts from the Australian Space Agency and the NSW police came to see the site after hearing about the discoveries. A spokesperson for the agency said, the agency is actively working to support formal identification of the objects and is engaging with our counterparts in the US. If the community spots any further suspected debris, they should contact local police in the first instance. Superintendent John Klepsarek, who is in charge of the Monaro Police District, said that the objects would stay on the properties until SpaceX said who owned them. Dr. Tucker said that the pieces could be the biggest pieces of space junk found in Australia since parts of NASA's Skylab space station fell to Earth near the town of Belladonia in the southwest of Western Australia in 1979. He said there was still a lot to find out about what the object could be used for. Next, rocket debris lands in the Indian Ocean as NASA claims China failed to disclose its re-entry location. On Saturday, a Chinese rocket crashed back to Earth over the Indian Ocean. NASA says that Beijing did not give them the specific trajectory information they needed to warn them where possible debris might fall. The Long March 5B rocket came back into Earth's atmosphere over the Indian Ocean at about 12.45 p.m. EDT on Saturday. Saturday, according to the U.S. Space Command. All countries that send things into space should follow best practices and do what they can to share this kind of information ahead of time. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson said, this will make it possible to make accurate predictions about the risk that debris will hit something. Doing so is critical to the responsible use of space and to ensure the safety of people here on Earth. Aerospace Corp., a government-funded nonprofit research center near Los Angeles, says it was dangerous to let the rocket's entire main core stage, which weighs 22.5 tons, return to Earth in an uncontrolled re-entry. Analysts said earlier this week that the rocket body would break up as it fell through the atmosphere, but that it was big enough that many pieces would probably survive a fiery re-entry and rain debris over a 2,000 kilometer long and 70 kilometer wide area. Reuters asked the Chinese embassy in Washington for a comment but they didn't answer right away. This week, China said it would keep a close eye on the space junk, but it didn't pose much of a threat to people on the ground. The Long March 5B rocket took off on July 24th to deliver a laboratory module to the new Chinese space station being built in orbit. This was the third flight of China's most powerful rocket since its first launch in 2020. In 2020, pieces of another Chinese Long March 5B crashed on the Ivory Coast. No one was hurt, but several buildings were damaged in this West African country. Moving on, Blue Origin sends the first Egyptian and Portuguese nationals to space. On Thursday, Blue Origin, which Jeff Bezos owns, sent six people into space. Two of them were the first people from Egypt and Portugal to do so. Mission N-22 saw the new Shepard suborbital rocket take off from Blue's base in the West Texas desert at 8.58 a.m. local time. 1358 GMT. The self-driving reusable vehicle sent its crew capsule 62 miles, 100 kilometers, above sea level, above the Kármán line, which is the international boundary of space. On a live stream, a crew member could be heard saying, I'm floating, as the capsule coasted to its highest point and the people inside felt like they had no weight for a few minutes. The mission was over about 11 minutes after the rocket took off. The rocket and the capsule returned to the base on their own. 
Sarah Sabri, an engineer from Egypt, and Mario Ferreira, an entrepreneur from Portugal, were the first people from their countries to leave Earth. It also had Kobe Cotton, one of the five people who started the sports and comedy YouTube channel Dude Perfect, which has more than 57 million subscribers. A Blue Origin spokeswoman confirmed that all six crew members paid for their seats, with the exception of Sabri, whose seat was paid for by the nonprofit Space for Humanity. Blue Origin hasn't said how much its tickets will cost. Star Trek legend William Shatner was one of the famous people who flew for free on the flight in the past. In other related news, beyond Artemis 1, NASA plots cheaper rocket rollout while Congress calls for more flights. NASA hasn't launched its next generation moon rocket yet, but it announced a change in how it will pay for future launches this week. It also got a new order from Congress to increase the number of flights it makes each year. Artemis 1, which is made up of the Space Launch System rocket and the Orion capsule, will be moved from the Vehicle Assembly Building at Kennedy Space Center to Launch Pad 39B on August 18th. It could take off as soon as August 29th. The unmanned test flight will send Orion on a mission that could last up to 42 days and cover more than 1 million miles, including several trips around the moon. The main goal is to ensure that Orion can carry crews on future missions. This includes testing a heat shield that can handle the stress of a hard re-entry. Orion will come home faster and hotter than any spacecraft has before, said Bill Nelson, the head of NASA, at a press conference on Wednesday. If everything goes well, NASA will move toward the crewed Artemis II mission, which won't land on the moon but will orbit it no sooner than May 2024. This will be followed by Artemis III, which won't happen before 2025, and will send people, including the first woman, to the moon's surface for the first time since Apollo 17 in 1972. The SLS and Orion hardware for the first three Artemis missions is either done or in the works, but NASA's Office of the Inspector General said in November that the Artemis program will have cost more than $93 billion by 2025. This includes years of delays from SLS's main builder, Boeing, and to a lesser extent, from Orion's main builder, Lockheed Martin. NASA first spoke about this project in 2012, and the first launch was supposed to happen as early as 2016. Each launch was expected to cost $500,000. The audit says that the cost of each launch is now expected to be $4.1 billion for the first four missions. The SLS rockets make up $2.2 billion of that total. Finally, as reflective satellites fill the skies, students are making sure astronomers can adapt. As satellites move across the sky, they reflect sunlight down to Earth, especially during the first few hours after sunset and the first few hours before sunrise. As more companies put networks of satellites into low Earth orbit, it's getting harder to see the night sky. Astronomers are especially trying to find ways to change. With this in mind, a group of students and professors from the University of Arizona have finished a large study to track and describe the brightness of satellites. They did this by making a ground-based sensor that can measure satellites' brightness, speed, and paths in the sky. Their work could help astronomers. If they knew when bright satellites were coming, they could close the shutters on their telescope-mounted cameras to stop light trails from messing up long exposure images. Professor Vishnu Reddy led the research team co-leading with Professor Roberto Forfaro at the university's Space Domain Awareness Lab, which keeps track of and describes all kinds of objects that orbit Earth and the Moon. The study's lead author is Grace Halfordy. The study shows how the team made a satellite tracking device to measure the brightness and location of SpaceX Starlink satellites and compared those measurements to government satellite tracking data from the Space Track Catalog database. Over the course of two years, the team took 353 measurements of 61 satellites. They found that the government's Space Track Catalog and the U Arizona calculations were only off by an average of 0.3 arc seconds when it came to the positions of Starlink satellites. A dime held 2.5 miles away is about the size of an arc second in the sky. Reddy said that natural delays in the government data probably caused the small difference, since the data is based on estimated orbits that were calculated days ago instead of on real-time observations. It can lead to positioning errors. Well, that's all the time we had for today. Comment below which of the latest developments you found most interesting. Till next time, cheers!